In this video, I am going to try and help a viewer and of course help other viewers like yourself who might be having a problem figuring out why we need to adjust the bottom of the stair stringer and how that adjustment will impact the rest of the steps throughout the stairway. And I'm not going to be using a ledger this time. I believe I have other videos on that. In this video, we are going to attach the top of the stringer to the bottom of the flooring, or in other words, have the top of the stair stringer even with the top of the floor joist. Now, the first thing I want to do is explain how each one of the steps will impact all of the stringer riser measurements. So here we have a finished stairway with seven and a quarter inch risers going all the way down to the lower level. And if we go to the lower level, you can see where I've had to adjust the bottom part of the stair stringer. And all I did here was subtracted any materials that the stair stringer was going to be sitting on, along with the thickness of the stair treads. And I'm not going to need to do that for the rest of the stairway unless, and this is the biggie here, unless any of the material sizes change in thickness. So for example, if I have two inch thick stair treads and one and a half inch thick decking on the top, I'm going to need to adjust the top measurement of the stair stringer to compensate for the difference. And again, to find the total rise of your stair weight, you're just simply going to measure from the lower level to the upper level and then divide the amount of risers you have into that number with the understanding that the top of the stringer will not represent the top of the stair tread. And I say that most of the time, you'd have to build the stairs different than what I'm showing you here, because here you can see where the measurement for the finished riser is an inch and a half, or the thickness of the tread, higher than this part of the stair stringer. And again, we're going to work our way down to the bottom where we had to subtract three inches off of our seven and a quarter inch measurement because of the thickness of the tread and the thickness of the sill plates we're using to connect the stair stringers to the concrete floor slab. If you don't need to use the base plates, then you're only going to be subtracting an inch and a half off of seven and a quarter. And that should make sense looking at this design here. Again, the height of the riser is going to be represented by the difference between the floor and the top of the step. And again, that's just going to be at the bottom. The rest of the measurements for each individual riser should be the same, working your way all the way up to the top of the stairway, unless like I mentioned earlier, there's a difference in any of the material thicknesses throughout the stairway. So again, the overall total rise is not going to be to the top of the floor joist. It's going to be from the top of the finished floor to the bottom of the top of the lower floor. And if we're going to be using the same tread thickness, then everything should work out by simply cutting the thickness of the tread along with any additional materials you're going to be using in this area here. And if any of this does not make sense, you're still having a problem with it, feel free to provide me with the details of those problems in the comment area. And I'll take a look at them and see if I can provide you with a different explanation if this one here doesn't make sense.